We're going to teach a series together finally. Mm. Cool. In tandem, parallel, but not at the same time. I mean, at the same time, but not at the same time. Not on the same stage together at the same time. I'll do my services, he'll do... It's, this is very confusing, isn't it? But we'll be teaching on the same topic. Which is the Bible. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake, wake up. up. Where we, we wake, wake up. up. Wow, that's the first time we ever did the whole thing. We should harmonize it. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. And uh, we got a scripture for your day. We're going to pray. Thank you for joining we're us. We're excited. Thank you for being in the car and the, the, those who are listening to us on the on radio. radio. We're on. They're watching us on the radio. Yeah, that is not funny. Just can you guys please text Give Wake a, Up and tell us it's not funny it's, so we can comment go on YouTube and just let him know stop that joke. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Just cut it out. What you have to do with it. It's a, over. Here's the thing. With a great joke, no. there's always a lull. There's a point there's a, where there's it's not lull, funny anymore. But then if you stay with it. <laughs> You know that. You're considering you stay it. Stay with it. Pure joy. Then it becomes funny once again. It can become my funny wife, again. She's just like, because after 25 years of marriage, like, I'll say funny things. And she's like, whatever. Right? And, but I'll stay with it. Yeah. And then finally she starts to laugh. I think the problem is when we, is that your wife not thinking you funny anymore is that we, we, we just keep using the same material. Right. We need new material. I'm, no, I'm always bringing new material. Are you? I'm new. Yeah, I'm always bringing new so fun I, stuff. I just keep going. My wife will be like, wait, you've said that like 14 times. It's just not funny anymore. Maybe I should just stay with it. Yeah, you stay with it. Until okay. they, and then they start to laugh. All right. So our scripture today is work out. I like that. Somebody say work out your own salvation with reverence and awe. Or it's, another one is energy and purpose. Mm. Now, we know that was not talking about like getting to heaven. Right? No, of course not, because Jesus already did all the work. Did all the work, so I don't you, have to work that out. So just what, believing in Jesus, and you are going, you're in eternity. So what is he saying here? He's saying for you and I, when we're down here on earth, that we got to get a little pumped. Mm -hmm. That we got to work out sometimes that, that those relationship issues. Sometimes we got to work out that depression. Sometimes we got to work out some of that negative thinking that in life, you get, so, so when I want to get bigger biceps, what do I got to do? Uh, gotta work out. I got to work out. You got to do curls. You got to get some heavy weight right. on there and do some reps. Right. And uh, so take was, the time to go to the gym. So at the end there, you know, I encourage you to watch the message. It, 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 it was a whole it was lot of fun. It was such a great message. It was a whole lot of fun. We, 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 we all need uh, that incentive, that coaching, that voice in our lives right. that tells us, hey, your marriage could be better. And right. I don't care how good it is. It could always be better. Right? You, you could become a better father. You could right. become a better mother. We can become better at our jobs. And you don't find a guy like at the gym, you know, one of those buff guys that's walking around. He's like, yeah, I guess I don't have to do biceps ever again. They're all done. No. In fact, the guy who's he's buff working. is probably working harder than everyone harder. else. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you find out that the guy's got a great marriage is still working as hard or harder. There's gyms now where you can't make noise while I you're working say out. That. Did you tell me that? I've been trying to figure out who told me this. Uh, well, I, Are they called like purple gyms or something? I didn't weird? see a color associated with it, but I, I, went, I think that <laughs> all gyms should just be colorless, to be honest. Why do we have to assign a color to it? You said the color. We're all just people. <laughs> we, we, we went to a gym and, and I think it was like a purple gym and, and they have all these signs on the walls, no making noise while you work out. And when you signed up, they made sure you and, signed a bunch of and stuff. And no lifting heavy weights. <laughs> I was so surprised by this. We were just there hey. for a couple of weeks and me and my son, we want to work out even though we're, yeah. we're uh, hitting the beach. Yeah. Well, especially when you're hitting the beach, right? right. And so we would run, run out of this gym and we got like a week pass and uh, yeah, they had... And they're like, we don't want to... I didn't realize it's really hard to work out without making some noise. No, I grunt. You just, <laughs> yeah, you got to grunt it because you got a lot of weight on there. But I guess if you're not doing heavy weight, they're like, here's our gym is. We don't want people to see results. Yeah. We want people <laughs> just to stay the same. <laughs> No, it's honestly. We don't really call it a workout. It's it's more like a, a play. Out. It's, it's a play date. It's called out. <laughs> we just show up and we're out. I could see putting a sign like that in the bathroom. But there's people. There's people that <laughs> <laughs> too far. That might be too far. No making noise while in here, but not in the gym. Gotta work it out though in the bathroom. 
I gotta make a noise. But sometimes you you know, it, it's working because we out. want everyone to be. At, we just want to keep everybody down. It's a the generation. It's the millennial. Some of some of you, not all of you. Of course, they not. just they just want they just want to just hey, let's just keep it here. And why do we have to be? Why so, don't you know if it's millennials? Because I'll tell you what, Gen Xers could stay in bed all day long. It because doesn't... well, here's the thing: if you're here, then you're gonna make me feel bad about myself. Everybody's got to get a trophy. Nobody, right? And, and, and you're right. Gen X went through that with our, our children. I remember the first basketball game, and they're like, hey, we don't keep score. Yeah. Because um, we don't want to make kids feel bad. I'm like, but that's life. Life keeps score. And the score kind of helps us push ourselves. Right. I go to the gym, right? So my gym is all like, and there's one guy there. I love him. He grunts so loud. Me and Peyton, every time we see him, he's all, he talks to himself. He's by himself, and he's always like, come on! Come on! Let's get this one. Let's go! Come on, I'm going to get this. And but everyone's maybe, like... Maybe we could be like that with our Christianity. Oh, I love that. But here's what... The, I watch him and he puts some weight on for the bench. And I'm like, I go, I can do that. So I put on more than I normally would. So oh, he, it pushes you. He pushed me. He did. Because I'm like, I, I can could try harder. That. I could try harder. So you get, you need to be in a church and a place and in a world and surround yourself. The Bible says, get around people who are success and have what you want because it pushes you to be better. You're like, I could be a husband like that. Yeah. Right? I can do that. I could press in deeper in my worship. I could press in deeper in my prayer life. I right. could press in deeper into the word of God. I could try a little harder. I could get up a little earlier in the morning. I could... You'd be more proactive in right. my mind. I could be less guess, into the things that are mind numbing. I could get a book and start reading more. Right. There are there are things that are on the inside of us that want to grow us. Right. There's right. something on the the spirit of Christ comes on the inside of us and wants to build and right. transform us. And I love what it says. If you keep reading, it says. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, that phrase means knowing that you really can't do it without God. Right. You, it's, it's, it's the losing faith in myself. Right. It's, it's knowing that I cannot do this without Jesus. I can't overcome that addiction without Jesus. I can go to rehab and I can sweat it out and right. I can work my hardest, but the reality is myself at some point hits the wall and right. it can't go on. It right. can't do it. And so this, this phrase means I, 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 knowing full well like you go into it. Paul ran, man. He was a he was a runner. He was a worker, but he knew full and well that he could not do what his race was without Jesus. You cannot be the husband God's called you to be without church, or the father without God. God, without. And so he says, "For it is God who works in, in you." We Both got the will to do. Wow. For his good pleasure. What's his good pleasure? His good pleasure is he wants you to be successful. He wants you to have a great marriage. He wants you to raise up some great ch children. Yeah. He wants to be doing it through you. Yes. And then it says, do all things without complaining and disputing. Oh, I don't like going. Where do we keep reading? We shouldn't have kept reading. I'm oh, sorry. Like yeah, you liked it without that's, the... That's just dumb. That's dumb. I can't believe that. do you have to do that? that? Right? I, you I go don't to, want if to go, go to work to the, today. You, right? Yeah, I didn't want to do wake up at all. I woke up this morning. I'm like, I don't want to do wake up. Yeah, this is... Because well, you just, come just, in, and then yeah. I have to deal with my brother. Right. And, and there's so, work, and, and he's annoying. And then he's argumentative. Between yeah. episodes... I am not argumentative. There's things that I'm happen not. that you I guys... I don't argue. You do. You argue all the time. I don't argue. always like... Oh, no, yeah. you're wrong. You know what I'm we right. need to do on the show? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No, you're wrong. I'm right. <laughs> well, I don't argue. And so, you know, and we're teasing, obviously, but doing everything without arguing and complaining changes right. your life, right? It does. Uh, Get up today and be better at your job. Yeah. And instead of complaining about having to go to work, and your children are hearing this, and people around you are hearing this. Instead, man, this is going to be a great day. I'm going to go. Because, you know, here's the thing. If you're going, I'm going to use the workout example. If you're going to go work out, and you're down about it, and you're like, oh, I hate it. i got to go work out. It's not long you before you it. stop. You, no, and you, you won't, won't push it. yourself. No. And you won't, you won't be true. great at it. I was on the cycle. Paddle in, paddle in, paddle in. There was a guy sitting right next to me, and he looked at me, and I'm sweat, and he, and I have convinced myself I love it. Okay? Yeah, that's Can what you have to do. Absolutely convinced myself. I do. Yeah. And he actually said to me when I went into my like, I go into these like calmer times, and I let my body recover, and then I go yeah. fast again. I do too. It's called a coma. And he actually, but he said to me out loud, he said, "I hate cardio." Right. And so for him, it was this laborious chore. Right. And for me, I've convinced myself it's fun, it's great, I'm loving it, and I don't. But I've convinced myself that I do. See, and you got me on the cardio thing. So what did I used to always say? I'm like, I hated cardio. I hate cardio. Yeah. I hate it. I yeah. hated it. So I've done the same thing. But what I've done is um, I do, it's called a bear run. So how far can a bear run? Because I'm, I'm preparing <laughs> myself. I tell Peyton, how far do you think a bear can run? He's like, I don't know, maybe two minutes. I go, that's what I do. I do two minutes. I just want to be a bear be, for two And then I get down and I did a minute 55 and Peyton's like, 
the bear got you. The I'm bear. like, dang it. <laughs> he, he persevered. He persevered. I would outrun a bear. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. Let's pray that no one gets <laughs> eaten ahead. by a bear. Father God, I just thank you and praise you, Lord, for every person that's listening to this right now. And Lord, that you're inspiring us, you're coaching us with your words, that you're moving on the inside of us, uh, pressing us, Lord, that you are pressing us to reach our potential, Father God, to do our part. We know that you and we rely upon you to do your part. Those things that we cannot do, we know that you step in and fill in that gap. And we trust and we rely upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy this clip. You know, people will come to you when they see something different in you. That's when they come to you. People don't like advice until they see something different. So we got a guy, that uh, pay to tell you, this guy showed up the gym to bench, and we're benching over there. And he doesn't look like, the, you know, hey, I take steroids. He's just, like, he looks pretty ordinary. But when he puts weight on the bench, man, I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's so much weight. And he's all boom, boom. And after the third time I saw him, I had to go over. I had to say, I said, all right, I need to know, what are you doing? What's your, what's, your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your sets? What's your reps? What are, what are you doing? So he, what he was, his fruit is what draw me to him. I don't, right? There's a whole lot of people in there. I don't want their fruits. I don't want to ask, and I don't want your advice. But when I see their fruits, I want that. And the same thing for you. When you begin to produce, come on, somebody out there, you begin to produce, and they look at your relationship with your teenager. They look at your relationship with your spouse. They look at your relationship with your friends and how you deal. They begin to come to you and go, hey, how are you doing that? And it's at that moment I can say, these are the things that I have worked out. I am showing the fruits in my life. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed up. it. Share it. Share it. Put it out there. Don't forget to subscribe. Text wake up to 84483. Visit wakeuptv.tv. And make sure you're in church this weekend.